Get the popcorn popping, get the sodas pouring. Chris Kelly, I'll discuss that, or Chris Henry, I'll discuss that later on. And we're going to go to the phones. We have our first caller. Hello. Uh, yeah, my head flared up real bad. Yeah, we know. All right. What was that? That's nice to know. Call Preparation H. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's get back into the show, Pittsburgh. Wow, that's okay. a bad night tonight. Just row for two, folks. Okay. Yeah, Ralph. <laughs> yes, hello, uh, who's this? Ralph, this is John down on the south side. Yes, John, how you doing tonight? Hey, first off, I want to say I love the show. Okay. Okay, and I want to okay. say that your co-host is a handsome fellow, and that's a nice sweater he's wearing. <laughs> Thanks. But what I wanted to call about, I don't have a sports uh, comment. What my comment is all these little kids that keep calling you in, I think you should go out, find them, and beat them, and then <laughs> smack their parents around <laughs> for not, you know, parenting their, their children. Yeah, I mean, you're, these kids have nothing better to do than call up and make farting noises on the show. Uh, you're and right. Go out and find them. You're right, John. You're right. Yes, you know. You know what, John? You know what, John? I don't let that bother me at all. And you know, a lot of these uh, these other talk show hosts, they let that bother them. It makes them get upset. I don't bother it at all. I just strike it up as you know, hey, you want to be immature, you want to play around, you want to call the show. I feel you. If you don't have anything better to do with your time, you know, hey, we, yeah. tell you, what, you must a lead man. a dull life then or something, you know. Exactly. You're a good man. All right, all right. hey, I'm thanks, John. Let's get back to the show. All right, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have another caller. Hello. <laughs> no, oh, hi, this is uh, Mike from Mount Washington. Oh, hey, Mike, how are you? What's going on tonight? Um, not much. Uh, for, I want to talk about the Steelers, but I also want to say something about that. Those pranksters, I mean, they're cool. <clears throat> okay. All okay. Right. Mike's Mike's part of the dull life crowd. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't it time for of, dinner? He's part of that crowd, you know what I mean? Tanya, hi, LaTanya. Welcome to the show. Hi, Jim. How you doing? I'm doing awesome, LaTanya. I'm hanging out with the Bethel Park cheerleaders. No, the Baldwin cheerleaders. <laughs> I'm just trying. I'm just trying to get a reaction from him. I love you guys. Remember, I'm punch drunk. I've done skylights here for the last four hours. Anyway, go ahead. First, I want to say, Slim's the man. Can you bring him back out Slim, again? Slim, come on out, man. Oh, Slim, come on out, Slim. Slim. David, Slim, here we go. Here we go. Here we go, here we go man. Here we go. Now. Oh, All right, David. Wait, you got some music. You got some music back there, Judge. So we can do, we can do his dancing machine routine for us. Go ahead, Slim. Give him the dancing routine, man. Just for Latanya, dude. Do the dance. Play the music, Jonesy. Give us the give us a dance, baby. Give us a dance. Go, Slim. Go, Slim. Go, Slim. Good. He's the official mascot. I thought that um, Stewart's performance was terrible, and I think Coward. Should have brought him, uh, took him out earlier and brought in Tom Zach. Like, I, I agree with you. I really do. We, we were screaming out of Sarah line as well for him to make a move, and he finally makes the move in the fourth quarter. Okay. And at that point in time, the big deal about it, and uh -huh. I think that the Steelers really need to get with it, like the offense. Right. They're not right. really catching many passes, and the ones that we do catch, like it's a Detroit game, they were bouncing off helmets, and mm -hmm. we were getting the calls from the officials. Right. I think if we would have been playing good the whole game, there shouldn't have even been overtime. Oh, absolutely, Brian. I, I said this earlier in the program. The offense has been struggling. Ray Sherman's offense is boring. He's uh, Tom Moore Jr. I've put in front of him. Uh, we have weak wide receivers who can catch the football, but they can't run with it. I don't blame the coin toss <coughs> at all on this. Interesting. <laughs> Two three one twenty two eighty eight is the number to call. Uh, whatever's on your mind tonight. Brian from Brookline is having a good time tonight. I think he had a little bit too much uh, at the mall, uh, Christmas shopping or whatever. Had a, a little bit too, too many hot dogs or something at the mall because uh, he obviously uh, had that happen. Oh, another Ralph. Yeah. All righty. Where are you from, Ralph? I'm from the north side. Okay. What's on your mind tonight? Um, I really want to talk about how the refs this year, they've been so bad in the NFL. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, how, like, the Bills played against the um, – it was the Patriots. Right. And, like, that that last play, I really didn't see any pass interference. Okay. And that, uh, the ref said that the, uh, for, there was a fourth down conversion right before that. Mm hmm And he said that, uh, that the dude was in bounds, but, uh, I, I don't know about you, Ralph, but, right. I mean, I thought he was totally out of bounds, clearly. Well, you know what, Ralph, I, I think that the officials in the NFL... Uh, should be reviewed. I think Paul Tagliabue didn't take any real decent action. 
uh, in the Detroit game. I think Phil Luckett and his staff should be fired. I think that those officials in that game did very poorly in the Detroit Ralph, game. Ralph, is that Ralph? 231-2288 is the number to call. It's amazing. It really is. It is amazing. We have some people out there that lead doll lives. 231-2288 is number to call. Anything on your mind tonight, come back next year and watch this program because I don't need you to call my show and call me names and everything else. Uh, why don't you do that with somebody else? I'm a respectable sports talk show host. Everybody likes my program. If you don't like it, don't watch it, don't call here. I don't need your opinions, okay? Uh, but I do thank you for calling, by the way. Happy New Year to you. Same to you. Uh, who's this? Oh, this is Michelle. All right, Michelle, what's on your mind tonight? Um, I wanted to ask you how you think the Steelers can do better next year with uh, drafts or anything? Uh, I, or who they can get rid of? Well, I think there's, there's a few Deadwood players that uh, they need to get rid of. First of all, they have Darren Perry, who's on a free agency. I, I don't see him coming back this and you year. You can't Michelle. do that because. Yeah. Draft picks are not ready. I hope they don't do that this year. I hope they sign some free agents, bring some people in that can help. Mm -hmm. Anything else on your mind tonight about the Steelers, Michelle? Um, me? Two, three, one, twenty-two, eighty-eight. Hello. Hello. Um, hello. Hi. Who's this? I'm Sean. Okay, Sean. Where are you um, from? I'm from Troy Hill. All right. What's on your mind tonight, Sean? Um, do you think um, Cordell's gonna be starting next season? He will be starting next season. Um, that's what Bill Carr says. Oh, I don't think so. I mean, it's all messed up, and you're fat. Okay, two three one twenty two eighty eight is the number to call. I'm you John. two can get on. What's on your mind tonight, John? I want to talk about uh, Minnesota and how they're doing so well in the playoffs, and I really think that they're going to go all the way. Well, I mean, John, a lot of people have been arguing me with it that like Denver's so good when it comes to the playoffs; they uh -huh. have home field advantage, and they're going to go all the way to the Super Bowl and win it. But okay. I just wanted to hear your opinion on it. Well, my opinion is this, John. I think the Super Bowl is going to be Atlanta and the New York Jets. I, I, I think Minnesota is going to flop in that final game. They may even get beat this week. Who are they playing again this week? I believe they're playing, uh, let me think off the top of my head. I think Arizona is going to do it again. I really do. Well, I really like Minnesota. Oh, you're entitled to your opinion, John. I know. Everybody's saying Minnesota and Denver. I don't think so. I think they're both going to choke, both of them, because they're coming in with this high hopes that because they had such a great regular season that they're going to win in the playoffs. It doesn't work that way. I don't think they're going to come in with the intensity and, and, uh, and, the, um, and, the, and the willpower to want to win the game. I think it's going to be Atlanta. Atlanta's a well-coached team, and so are the Jets. And both teams have come to play over the last few weeks, and I think they're going to do it again. Yeah, but you're fat, folks. All right, thanks, John. 231 2288 is the number to call. To make a comment, I wondered if, uh, are there any thoughts about Warren Moon coming to Pittsburgh? No, I doubt it. I highly doubt that at all. Perhaps that, that is a thought, though, Adam. That, that might happen. I don't know. We have to see what the new coach in Seattle is going to do with him. I mean, right now he's under contract with Seattle, and, uh, you know, they're in the process of hiring somebody, and uh, it, it could be Jim Hazlitt. We don't know if, if Moon will be the quarterback. We don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. that's it. 231 2288 is the number to call. What's on your mind tonight? We'll talk about the Steelers and uh, let's get back to the lines. Hello. I have two comments. My first is uh, on uh, Ricky Williams. Yep. Uh, did, uh, is the NFL uh, picking him up? Ricky Williams? Yeah, do you know if any. Yeah, he's available for the draft, absolutely. He's, he's probably going to be, take, be, be taken second in the draft because uh, Cleveland's going to take Tim Couch, the quarterback out of Kentucky. But yes, Ricky Williams is a senior, and he's, he's, he's uh, going to the draft. Uh, my second comment is... Uh, we got a time to take another call, Jonesy? Well, we only got uh, 30 seconds, but... If hey, John. Hey, I'm rooting for the underdogs, too, uh, the Falcons I'm going with, because, uh, you know, the Broncos, they're getting uh, their hopes up... Uh, Thanks a lot. Hey, listen, speak. <laughs> Very balanced. They throw the ball. Chandler's playing great. And like you said, they won in Minnesota, and that, that's a tough thing to do. Okay, let's go to Michelle. Hi, Michelle. You're on next. What's up? Hi, John. Um, I heard that uh, Elway is retiring. He made some comments about that, and I'm saying he isn't. Do you know when he is actually going to retire? Well, there's a lot of speculation that he's going to retire for the Super Bowl today. Coach Mike Shea. <laughs> 
Today, Coach Mike Han Shanahan said that... Uh, oh, we really does have some horse teeth. I think it should be the mascot for the Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the game? Yeah, well, I really think he should quit while he's ahead because I don't think he'll get another one next year. be a nice way to go out, don't you think? Yeah. It really would. Nice way to go out. Okay, thanks for the call. appreciate it. <laughs> You know the call on the line? Of uh, University of Pittsburgh. Do you know why he was linked? Well, supposedly that uh, he was trying to get some another extension uh, <laughs> through the athletic director and uh, was unable to do so. So he felt at this point in time that. Uh, and do you think it's a good idea if they use them on uh, every every game next year? The replays? Yeah. Absolutely. Bar bar none, you will see instant replay back next year. It's got to be back the way it was before. None of this uh, judgment thing or... or i tell you this, the officials... Do you have any idea what the officials made yesterday for that game? Um, no. $5,000. Wow. Each official made $5,000 to referee that game. That's wow. a lot of cash. Certainly something you and I would like to do. I'm going to move on. I appreciate your call. You know the call on the line? Uh, did you used to be a newscaster when you, like, like earlier? Did you used to be a newscaster? Did I see what, sir? Did you used to be a newscaster? No. Oh, um, so I just thought you were. I'm um, sorry. I uh, think you're an asshole. And your point is? <laughs> you stayed online again? My goodness. Who'd have thunk it? Hi, who's this? Uh, this is Earl. Earl? Yeah, and I would like to talk about um, Plan B. Okay, and, sure. And what's up with it? Like, they're using, like, more tax dollars, and we still have, like, um, of work, um, ordinary working people. Right. They still haven't paid off the old stadium, you know? Right, mm. right. Yeah, I understand that, Earl. Listen, Earl. Um, That's not true. The, right. Uh, the, the teams, the Steelers and the Pirates, have paid have off paid their off share. Their share, right. And they have paid the lease. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Well, anyway, <laughs> that was that was kind of nice. That was yeah. The the Steelers and the Pirates have paid their share. A little freer reign to be tougher with Cordell because I don't think last year anybody was tough with him, and I think that goes all the way uh, to the head coach. Sure. I just think that uh, you know they they, they kind of coddled him and they babied him, and I think that is what you saw on that sideline at Tampa Bay when he started the finger pointing. But I I, th height. I think it all uh, that all let's talk. Hello, um, yes, I'd like to um, one know what's up with Lemieux and the Penguins and if he plans on buying them. Uh, at this point, he does plan on buying them. Yes. Uh, okay. I just want to... Okay, two three one twenty two eighty eight is the number to call if you'd like to be part of the program. Hi Ralph, I want to know um, what's the deal with the Penguins and uh, are they going to actually stay in? Uh, Pittsburgh, or are they still going to get bought out? <laughs> <laughs> two three one twenty two eighty eight is the number to call. It's amazing. It's it's really amazing how we have people in this town that lead dull lives. I mean, it's really it's really something else. Two three one twenty two eighty eight is the number. Hey, I wanted to talk about uh, Bill Tillis and his uh, criminal record and how the Penguins feel about that. Mm. And. Uh, how it uh, affects the Durgles and Nagin. All right, let's uh, go to Jim. This, uh, thanks. Let's go to our next call, Jim. What do you think uh, Pitt's chances are of getting into the uh, Final Four? And if you think that the... <laughs> All right, yeah, man. Jesus. Oh, boy. What they got at the Shamrock? I don't know. <laughs> Jesus, oh. Tell me about it. Oh, man. <laughs> CBC Sports Line with Darcy Rhoda. That question. Steve and Delta, your question for Blue. Steve, are you there? Blue? Go ahead, Blue. Or go ahead, Steve. Blue. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? Um, I'll just give you one quick comment and I'll just take, uh, take off. Um, in spite of like um, recent actions, uh, what do you think of um, Hollywood Hulk Hogan's recent takeover of the NWA? <laughs> I never got that. I never got that. I heard uh, Hulk Hogan or something like that. Hulk Hogan in basketball? I don't think so. <laughs> Listen, you're an eight-year NBA veteran. You've seen lots of young guys come to the league. How good can Shreve be? Jerry and Surrey, your question to our panel. 
Yes, I'd just like a pleasant good evening to everybody. I'm just concerned about the SAT Kinnan thing here. I was wondering if that might may have been like interacting with the players' performance and everything, and just wondering your responses to any of that. Ian, you take that one. Go ahead. Well, I don't think the players uh, are too bothered by ESSA. Well, don't fall down on them, sport fans. They're going to be there. <laughs> George and Langley, your question for Orlando. Yes, well, we, well, we, we'll go right over the Shark Club, but on that, but yeah. there was 40 million. Cliff and Burnaby, your question for Kurt. Hi, everybody. Yeah, Cliff from my hop here. Are you there, Cliff? Now, Kurt, you coached the team here for a year and a half. Uh, a lot of players today go public with their uh, contracts and playing time. We're joined by Harold Sneffs in studio. Terry and Sir, your question for Harold. Well, that was a nice call for you. <laughs> Sounds like somebody I fought. <laughs> <laughs> you beat him up pretty good. <laughs> Our profile leads Captain Doug Gilmore and Gino Ojic takes your calls. What happened to uh, Gino late in the third period with his finger? Oh, I, I asked him in the room. He said he, uh, he got a slash. I didn't quite see it either. Uh, he, I think he, uh, he had a slash uh, by uh, Matt Johnson right on his finger. So uh, uh, I guess he'll be fine, though. Peter Vancouver, your question for Donald. Yeah, hey, Darcy, love the show. Thanks very hey, much. Um, Donald, do you have a drink before the game like Darcy does before the show? <laughs> no, not really. I think uh, that uh, nobody uh, does. Uh, it's not very good. Uh, it's uh, a little tough on the legs. You're uh, one of the enforcers on the team, and, of course, Troy Crowder is coming back. Uh, you and Gino seem to really enjoy playing together on the same line. You're, is your strategy to get in there and do lots of forechecking and uh, cause havoc? that as we progress here. Well, let's bring on the Russian player who's joined the Canucks two years ago from the Buffalo Sabres. He was Buffalo's fourth pick in the 88 entry draft. After six productive years with the Sabres, Alex was acquired by the Canucks in July of 1995. Last season, he finished the year with 107 points, including 55 goals. He joins Pavel as the only Vancouver player to ever score 50 goals in a season. We're pleased to welcome to CBC Sports Line Alexander McGilling. Alex, welcome to the show. First of all, your reaction to the big trade with the New York Rangers. Newman and Richmond, your question for Alexander. Newman, are you there? Newman, yes, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Newman, your question for Alex. Good evening. Um, I, just, I just want to tell you, Darcy, I really enjoy your show, and it's great to see that you're on every night after the hockey game. Your question for Alex, thanks a lot. Uh, could you, like, shut up? Well, that's not a good question at all. <laughs> Now listen, you guys leave on a five-game road trip, uh, Alex, uh, starting in Chicago on Monday. Uh, this really is really a telltale for the season, whether or not you guys will make the playoffs. Well, the media lets that happen. Jazz and Langley, your question for our panel. Are you there, Jazz? Yep. Your question for our group here? Oh, okay. I've been like a Canucks, uh, long-time Canucks fan, and I've just been wondering like, um, if the Canucks don't make the playoffs this year, if there's going to be um, Tom Rennie or whoever... Might be, uh, there might be like some kind of incentive fund, such as the first one to like well, it. Uh, it's a a let me ask you, uh, Mike, uh, you had a story today about Gordy Howe making a return April the 1st. Uh, Actually, Darcy, I was going to ask you that question. I'm yeah. done. Hockey history. Anakin and New Westminster, your question for Marcel. Good evening. Good evening. You have failed me for the last time. What's. Oh, didn't hear that question very clearly. With us is a CBC Sports Line Canucks Player of the Year, Marty Jelena. Richard in Surrey, your question for Marty. Uh, Darcy? Yes, go ahead to Marty. My name is Dick. Oh, really? Dick good. Nice. That's a nice name. That's very good. Marty, it's been a frustrating year for you and the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, what learning experience can you take from this year? As well, so give us a call. The number's at the bottom of your screen. Now, uh, the show, did you have fun with it? We had a lot of fun. Uh, it was uh, a lot of fun. Uh, it was a great experience for me, personally, uh, to be a host of your own television show and uh, having the producer talk in your ear when you're talking. <laughs> you know all about I that. I know all about that, eh? <laughs> and throwing to so, different commercials and different cues. But, uh, you know, I look at the first show uh, and in early October to the last show two weeks ago and uh, quite a, a drastic yeah, improvement, I would think, uh, for, for sure. my improvement. Yeah, that's good. Uh, we've got our first caller, uh, Rick from Surrey. You're in the locker room. Hey, Darcy. Hello. What are you, some kind of butt <laughs> ventriloquist? Okay. Oh, we got calls like that here, too, eh? Okay. <laughs> I, I, I hope you didn't have too many on your show like that. We don't have the delay here that you guys got, Darcy, but uh, I want to talk about 
hear what Samuel and New West has to say on the issue. Samuel, are you in their locker room? Hi there, I love the show there. Thank you. I'd just like to comment on uh, Darcy Rhoda. Yeah, you've got the worst, absolute worst show in the world. <laughs> That's that's number that's uh, that's number two. It's like you say, it uh, it happens. And uh, caller and uh, so I'll stick up for Darcy. Uh, I think it was one of the better uh, talk shows we've had in this uh, had in this market. And 